In this demonstration, we're actually not going to be talking about measures. We're going to talk about another common DAX application, and that is adding a calculated column to our tables. So I'm just going to go ahead and close my measures tables. We're actually not going to need them this time because now we're going to be focusing on our actual data tables and adding uh, just some new columns here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually do this over here in the data view so that it's a little bit easier to see everything that I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my products table and let's go ahead and add a new column to our products table. And you can see as soon as I went up here and hit a uh, new column, a new column literally appears here that is blank and awaiting instruction. So let's just go ahead and call this new column something simple like product underscore profit, just to kind of keep the naming structure of my table here. And product profit is just going to be our product price minus our product cost. And one thing that I want to point out that I'm not doing, that I've been doing up till this point uh, with measures, is that I'm not applying any kind of aggregation. Like I'm not subtracting the sum of product cost from the sum of product price because the values that I'm going to be adding to this table are already calculated at the row level. There's no aggregation that's going to need to be applied here. For every row in this table, I'm just creating a new column where cost gets subtracted from price. And you can see when I add that, here is what I get. A new column that lets me know what the uh, expected profit is based on the cost and price of all of these products sold. And then if I want to you know, sort this into sending order to see what my most profitable products are that I'm selling, I could do that. Now maybe I'm thinking it would really be interesting to be able to sort these uh, values uh, into different pr uh, price categories. So let's go ahead and resort these categories and let's go ahead and create uh, a new column. So we're going to go up here and select new column again. And the logic for this column is going to be using an if statement. You can use if or switch. It doesn't really matter. And this is going to be called product price category. And the logic is gonna be something like this. If product price is less than $10, then we'll call this less than $10. And for now, I'm just gonna leave everything else blank. And you can see that immediately Power BI goes through all of these different values and product price and just checks to see if it's less than $10. And if it is, it adds less than 10. And if it isn't, it's blank because I haven't actually added more criteria yet. So let's go ahead and uh, add another layer to this if statement where if product price is less than, and this time let's go just to 15, then and we're going to call this $10 to $14.99 because we're looking for values that are less than $15, but don't include $15. And I forgot to add yet another if statement. So there we go. Notice that I did need to nest the if statements in order to sort of keep this going. And you can see that once I nested an additional if statement, now I've got 10 to 14.99. So let's go ahead and nest an additional if statement. And this time we're going to look for situations where the product price is less than $20. And so this is going to be $15 to 19.99. And I forgot my dollar signs, but no big deal. We'll add those back in real quickly. That takes care of my $15 to 99. And the last value that we're going to add is our result if false value, which closes out our if statement here. So we have a logical test that we're looking to perform, such as product price being less than a certain threshold. And then we're looking to return a value if it's true and a result and a result if it's false. So for all other values where you know none of the criteria are met, I just want to call that um, greater than 
or equal to $20, or just to keep it a little bit tighter, let's call it $20 or more. And so now we have a new column over here, less than $10, 10 to 14, 15, and $20 or more. And let's just head back over here and let's go ahead and grab our product price category and let's go ahead and sort it. And now one thing that I'm already noticing here is that of course it's sorting alphabetically like Power BI always does. And this makes it a little bit complicated because in a perfect world, I would want these values to show up uh, in the proper order based on price. Like I would want less than $10 first, followed by 10 to 14.99, followed by 15, 19.99, followed by 20 or more. Not the way that it's being displayed here. So let's go ahead and head back over to our data and I'm gonna add one more uh, field here. And this time, just to mix things up a little bit, I'm going to use switch. And I'm gonna call this product price category order. And we're going to use switch and we're going to perform this switch based on the following criteria being true. Uh, if product price is less than 10, I want that to be sorted first. If product price is less than 15, want that sorted second. And if product price is less than 20, I want that sorted third. All other values, which should be values that are greater than $20, I want those to be sorted fourth. And this is a great example for kind of why I started using switch instead of if a long time ago is you can see that instead of nesting multiple if uh, functions together to kind of create this monstrous if statement, switch lets, lets us bypass a lot of that. We're basically performing these switches on the fly. As long as the criteria are true, they'll get evaluated in this order. So now when we save this, you can see that all of my first product price categories are being uh, labeled with one. All of our next categories are two, then we have three, and then we have four. And now that we have this order field, we can drop this in, and currently it's summing it because it's numeric, but if we tell Power BI not to summarize it, we can see this is the order that we want these to appear. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on product price category. I'm gonna go up here to my column tools, and I'm going to specify that I want this, this product price category to always sort by my order column that I created. Now, when I get rid of the order column, notice that it's still in the right order, less than $10, $10 to $14.99, dollars to $19.99, and $20 or more. We can also use calculated columns to perform lookups, which is very similar to VLOOKUPs or lookups in Excel. And they can be useful when you need to grab a value from another table and sort of embed it within a, a different table uh, in order to per perform some of your uh, logic or calculations that you're after. So let's go ahead and add a new column here. And this time we're going to call this um, even though I think that a lot of this information already exists in this table. Um, but let's go ahead and just look up the product name that goes with these product IDs, just so that we have it. And I'm going to look up a value, and I'm going to look up the product name based on the match between product ID in my product table and the product ID that exists in this table. So, I'm, you know, this is a little bit backwards, I think, from how I used to start to, to look at these when I first started doing my very first lookup values. But if we kind of work this backwards, we're looking for the product names in our product table based on the match between our product ID column in our products table and the product ID column that already exists here in our sales table. Now, when we save this, notice that it goes, that it returns the name of the product for the corresponding matches that it found. And we can scroll down through these and we can see we've got all kinds of different product names. And you know, if we want to just double check, let's go ahead and memorize that product ID eight equals deck of cards. And we should be able to go over here to our products table 
and reference product ID eight equals deck of cards, which means that if we wanted to, you know, we could even bring over additional information, even though we don't need these lookup values because there's already a relationship between these tables. This is a little bit redundant. I'm just trying to teach you how to do a lookup in case you should need it. So let's go ahead and do one more lookup and let's go ahead and look up product, product category. And once again, we're gonna use the lookup value function. And this time we're going to be looking up product category based on the match between product ID in our products table and product ID in our sales table. And whoops, you can see I accidentally added another parenthesis. We'll just go ahead and get rid of that. And now we've got all of our product categories carried over here to our fact table. So just a few high level examples of how to at least get started building calculated columns. I am just very quickly gonna give you my usual spiel that if you can perform most of these uh, transformations or add these columns to your, to your data set or to your data model in the Power Query editor, I would still recommend that you add those columns and perform those transformations in the Power Query editor so that they just get loaded right into your Power BI report instead of all of this DAX having to be kind of processed in the background. For a sm small report like this, it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference, but as your reports start getting more and more complex and as the amount of DAX that you're writing gets more complicated, and uh, starts to proliferate, it can really start to slow down your Power BI reports because Power BI's got a lot of different calculations it's gonna have to juggle. So if any of this sort of burden that you can take off of Power BI by sort of pushing these transformations directly to the model using something like Power Query Editor and get those processed before you start performing some of, the, some of these front end calculations, it's gonna benefit your uh, Power BI performance in the long run. So just letting you know, yes, you can create a lot of uh, custom and ca ca uh, custom columns and calculated fields using DAX, but that doesn't mean that you necessarily should. Honestly, creating a lot of these calculated fields is very rare for me nowadays because every example that I just showed you can be performed in the Power Query editor, which is where I tend to do most of that stuff. But that said, when you're just getting started, and especially when you have fairly simple reports, it's okay to do it in DAX most of the time. Uh, you'll know when it's not okay to do it in DAX when your Power BI reports start taking a long time to refresh and load. And you start having data, data visuals fail because of a lack of resources or a lack of memory. Then you should start, probably start pushing some of these transformations to the Power Query Editor to speed things up. But for now, just kind of letting you know, it's not all measures. You can write columns, you can write tables, all using DAX. Tables can get pretty complicated, which is why we're not co covering them, them in this beginner's course. But calculated columns are pretty simple, pretty straightforward, as long as you know what you're trying to do. And the examples that I just gave you are pretty common situations that you would be writing calculated columns using DAX. So I'll see you in the next lesson.